There's stuff going on. Celtics doing what they needed to do. No shock there. They took care of the Cavs. Uh, Win the series 4-1. Tatum leads the team. It's a 113-98 victory. He had 25-10-9. Al Horford had himself quite the evening. 22 points, 15 rebounds. Evan Mobley had a career-high 33 points and 7 rebounds. But remember, Cleveland, no Donovan Mitchell, no Jared Allen, no Karis LeVert. Um, I will say this, Shams. Look, the Cavs took another step forward, which I suppose we can look at as the positive. They lost in the conference semis. So off-season ideas, moves, what are we thinking is going to happen here? Big picture entering this summer. The Cavs are going to seriously evaluate the fit between Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland and rival executives I've spoken to even this week in Chicago at the Combine. They expect that the Cavaliers ultimately may have to choose one of them, and of course, the Cavs will be able to offer Donovan Mitchell a four-year, almost $209 million contract extension this summer. They want him to stay, and I'm told if Mitchell does decide to stay long-term, Garland's representation, they would have a conversation about the potential of a new home for him. He's a one-time All-Star, but his, his, his field goal attempts, his usage percentages, a lot has fallen for him since Donovan Mitchell arrived to this roster and there are multiple teams obviously monitoring Donovan Mitchell, but also Darius Garland. And if he becomes available in the marketplace. And then you have Evan Mobley, who did play a lot better at the five position. He's going to be in line for a massive contract, rookie contract extension this summer. And Jared Allen, he didn't play really the majority of this postseason after having that rib injury midway through that first round series against Orlando. His future is very much up in the air. And this is all with the backdrop of the future of J.B. Bickerstaff, Chandler's friend. He's had some pretty good success since taking over for John Beeline about four years ago. But his future and his job status, I'm told, is in serious jeopardy. The Cavs are going to take some time, multiple days. Uh, it could be some time that they take before they make a final decision on J.B. Bickerstaff. Like, what's the right move? Is there a better coach out there? There's obviously frustrations around the roster toward J.B. Bickerstaff at different points. But at the end of the day, they're going to need to make the best decision for their franchise. Does that mean Donovan Mitchell's back? Does that mean Darius Garland is back? Which one do you pick if you have to choose? Is J.B. Bickerstaff back? And this is all largely the expectations Donovan Mitchell has for this franchise. And last season, I'm told he was irritated that there was a celebratory atmosphere by just getting to the playoffs. And this year, after they win in the first round, it was, we should have much higher goals than winning just in the first round. But listen, this was their first First round win this season since 1993 without LeBron James. So this is pr a pretty good feat for the organization, but they've set themselves up with high expectations and a high amount of pressure going into the summer. That is hey, Chandler, a lot. Let me, let, me ask a, let me ask you a question, Chandler, because I'm not well-versed in Cavaliers drama, right? So it looks like they have a lot of talent. It looks like they have a, 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 a solid coach. They have the fan base behind them. They lost to the team that probably anybody was going to lose to. Everybody had Boston being predicted coming out of the East. What, what, what the hell is the problem? Like, I don't understand why yeah. there's so much turmoil. See, I'm, I'm not understanding. See, what's funny is, Lou, what was their realistic expectations? Like, you think you're going to go into this series and beat the Celtics? You think you're going to win the East uh, with this powerhouse Boston Celtics team with Milwaukee making the move for Damian Lillard with Joel Embiid and that Sixers team when they're fully healthy? So my whole point is, when you have this team, you have, you're building something. You're young. You have guys like Evan Mobley, Darius Garland. And the, the big disconnect in that locker room, everything I know, is Donovan Mitchell. So if I'm on the I'm on the other side of if, if he's not happy, if he's the one that's kind of ruffling all the feathers, if he doesn't have the relationship with the players, Darius Garland and the coaching staff, I, I think you have to look to move him before you blow up this team because they have enough with him and they almost have enough without him depending on what they get back from him because he's gonna he's gonna bring back a haul so if you can sign and trade him and you can bring other assets that fit with darius garland that fit with the pieces that they already have because they have the talent and when they were healthy this year they could compete with anybody they went on stretches but uh, like but like you're asking lou like how the hell would this team beat the Boston Celtics, let alone without three of their top eight players? It doesn't even make sense. Right. So if they're having these thoughts and conversations now, they probably have been having them for a long time because they knew damn well they weren't going to win this series. So I yeah. think when you have a disgruntled star like this, 
and all the drama surrounded by him, how do you bring him back with these teammates that aren't getting along with him? How do you bring him back with his coaching staff? These, these problems from this season aren't just going to be forgotten next season. And look at the coaching search that the Lakers are doing. Who's a better option than J.B. Bickerstaff? There is slim pickings out there right now with a good coach, unless you want to totally trade Donovan Mitchell, rebuild this from the ground up, and bring in a J.J. Redick type to grow with this young team. They don't have to do that, though. They're good enough to not do that and not rebuild and compete next year. They went to the conference semifinals. What were your realistic expectations this year? To win a championship? No. To beat the Celtics in a series? No. So so, so what, where, why, where's the panic? But I'm just yeah, okay, watching so like how they were building – how yeah. Donovan Mitchell, he's encouraging Garland like to make shots, shooting shots. They're bear hugging each other after the game. And it, it looks like these are positive stepping stones for an organization who's trying to find its footing um, since the exit of, of LeBron. And you're finally here on the doorsteps. Why why mess with that now? Why, why, why bother with that now? I'm confused. <laughs> But Lou, because mm -hmm. that's that's all fake. That's all that that's all. Donovan Mitchell hasn't been happy all season long. So yeah, he's being a good teammate. Yeah, he's showing he's that good. he cares on the sideline. But that, it's not real. Everything that everyone hears is he's not happy. He doesn't get along with people in the locker room. No one likes to JB Biggerstaff, which is crazy to me. And I will say he's my guy. I love him. I've never had him as a head coach. So when you're a head coach, you have a different role. You know, Lou. You have those homies, really your assistant coaches. You'll go out with them. You'll hang with them. When you get the head coaching job, it could be slightly different. So I can't speak on JB as being my head coach. As my assistant coach, he's the best I've ever had. And he filled it. And so so there's clearly a disconnect. And when there's a disconnect with the coach and the best player on the team, it's a real problem. And usually one has to go. So wait, when you say it's all fake, like the hugs, are like it's just good acting. So if that's the case, then is the is the is the given then that you do have to move Donovan Mitchell? There is no working around it if it's that bad. That's that's my that's my point. Obviously, he's their best player. He's their everything. So usually that helps. Usually that usually that trumps everything. But now when you're talking about your head coach, your second best player, other role that's players everything. that locker room where there's disconnect, it's like okay, how much yeah. are you willing to give in just to re-sign Donovan Mitchell to not still not happy? You can't forget about these issues this year. So my point is like lose. They're right there. They, they don't need to rebuild. They don't need to blow this up, and make a dumpster fire. They are right there. They have the talent. They are young. Every every other team right now, the Celtics, they're built to win now. The Milwaukee Bucks, they're built, they're even more so to built now. Joel Embiid's health is in question. The Cleveland Cavaliers can make a real run with or without Donovan Mitchell next year. So I would look to shop him and see what you can get. If not, he's a hell of a talent and he's a great player. We all know that. But the talent can only get you so far. If there's chemistry issues, if there's personal relationship issues, if there's no trust and a disconnect between your best player and your head coach or your two best players, it's never going to work, especially when you've got other great teams in that conference that you're going to have to go through. Can I ask you a question, Beatle, Chandler? You know what you... else? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, like our, our guest that'll, that'll be here later on, he can attest to this. We got along perfectly. Teammates, everything perfectly there was a disconnect with he and the coaching staff. So sometimes ah. when you have an issue with the coach, but you're cool with your teammates, and you're like, listen, mm -hmm. fellas, we're going to go out and we compete. I'm with you guys, but it's no way I can work with this guy ever again after this. I get that. You know, sometimes you have that, sometimes you have that disconnect, and that's possibly <laughs> what's happening here. I get that. <laughs> Shams. Yeah, I mean, on top of that disconnect, I mean, Chandler eloquently put all of that. But, uh, I mean, the, 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 the crux, bigger picture aspect of all that is, I think you have an organization that made it to the second round for the first time since 2018. They've won, they went to the playoffs back-to-back -to -back years with home court advantage. This is, a, this is an organization that feels prideful about what they've accomplished, what they've done the last couple of years, how they've been building. I mean, this thing really started with Darius Garland and Evan Mobley as your two young cornerstones. And then you get Jared Allen, then you get Dominic Mitchell, then you feel like you're building something. But the, the, the issue is, and, and the difference of opinion, I guess, on where this all stands is, Donovan Mitchell expects more. And I, I've had te right. teammates tell me all season he wants this team to compete for a championship. He wants his team to aim for higher than just the first round. And that's kind of also where the disconnect is at, where you have an organization that feels prideful of, of what they've done, how they've been building, and a guy like Donovan Mitchell who feels like, yo, we should not be just content and happy with a first-round win or getting to five games against the Celtics, who are obviously the prohibitive favorites to get to the finals this year out of the East. We like we can't be content with just that. So how do they get there? How do, is the, is there a middle ground? And if there's not, 
who goes. And that's what Kobe Altman, their GM, is going to have to hmm. figure out. I don't know if anybody wants to tackle this GM question, but okay, so let's say JB goes and Donovan stays. But if you keep Donovan, do you have enough to go get whatever this mysterious piece is that will now put them in position to have, as he would like, higher expectations? I mean, what is actually realistic here? Because it, it feels like there are a lot of little moving options, but it's a little overwhelming at the same time. Well, here's the problem, too. You're not Cleveland's not a free agency destination. So Donovan Mitchell is most likely the best player that you're going to you're going to have on your team. You can now I, I if you can shop him, you trade him, you can get two or three good players. And like I said, they have enough with Jared Allen, with Mobley, with Struess, with all the with the with Darius Garland. If they now put two or three more rotational players with that, they can almost be a better team than with them with this disconnect. So. I think there's room to make a jump. I just think we first you have to handle the locker room. You have to handle the chemistry because you can have all the talent in the world. If you're not vibing, if you're not getting along, if you're not willing to play as hard as you can every single night for your coach and for the guy next to you, it's not going to work. I don't hear, I don't care how good Donovan Mitchell is. And what's weird about this is he's everything I know about Donovan Mitchell. He's not a bad guy. He's likable. People right. love him. We have mutual friends. So I don't think this is like a, a, a negative towards Donovan Mitchell. I just think something happened in that locker room where there's too many issues to so, so the only thing left to do is to is to move is to make a move. So Kobe Altman's got a lot of decisions to make this summer, but my personal opinion is no need to panic. You are in solid shape. You are right there. You have the talent. And then the coaching front, my question is, Shams, like who the hell who do they hire? Like who who, who who's out there available? JJ Reddick. Woohoo! He's sure. everywhere. Like, fine. And, but, like, you're, you know you're what? Getting any better. Look, it's so many of these. Like, where is he going to go? This is the best case scenario for him off the top of my head, right? Like, you go to New York, you're going to be a, mm -mm. a sidekick to Bronson. Julius Randle is going to come back. You go to Orlando, that is that is Banchero's basketball team. Even if you come to Atlanta, it's still Trey Young's team. Okay, see, all of these teams already have their young superstars, their, their, their one, number one guy. So if you're trying to be a one guy, there's not a lot of scenarios you can leave Cleveland and become that. You're going to be a wingman to somebody who's already put some stepping stones in place with an organization. And so, I mean, where else do you go that you're not going to be the sidekick? So for him wanting to strive for more, it's best you build it where you are um, as it stands, opposed to trying to go somewhere else and fit in because you're going you're gonna to be the B option on 90% of the teams that's out there available for you. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. You know this, Lou. You think everything's not peachy on, on, on your town and your city and organization. You go somewhere else and it's worse. So I personally would love to see them work this out because I do think they have enough to compete next year. Let's not forget how good they were. The, those stretches where they were all fully oh, healthy. Yeah. They, were, they were really, really good. So let's let's not panic, Cleveland. You, you, you're right there. They also did win a bunch of games, too, when Donovan wasn't playing. So this is a very confusing situation to be in. And I'm glad it's not our jobs, guys, because I would be stressed out at night. Um, they were the losers of the game, however, and they are now out of the playoffs. The Celtics did win. So let's talk about them for a little bit here. Conference finals. This would be the third straight season, uh, six times in eight of the last eight of the last eight. It's a it's an impressive run. I don't know who wants to tackle it first, Lou. I was very negative about it yesterday. Uh, I'm all ears. Tell me why it's impressive. Consistent. Consistent. They're, they've been in a mix for, you know, six out of eight seasons, making it to the conference finals, you know, and, and I agree with the sentiments of Jalen Brown that he said at the start of the season. This year's championship or bust. You know, they're tired of getting just close enough to be a good basketball team. You know, they want to conquer the hill. Hmm. They want to be on top of that on that top of that mountaintop and and, you know, and, and celebrate a real win opposed to just getting to the conference finals and and having success in that way, you know? And so very consistent, very impressive. And they've done it with the core group of guys, you know? They've done it with, for the most part, the same group of guys with, with a little turnover here and there. But other than that, you know, Jalen Brown has been a part of all of these runs uh, with bringing Jason Tatum in right after that. And, and so they figured it out on how to keep chemistry going, on how to plug guys in and continue to have success. So very impressive run, but you know, like I said, they're in a situation now where, you know, good isn't good enough. They got to be great. They got to come away with a ring now. Yeah. What's interesting to me, we're talking about this Celtics, a super team a couple of shows ago. It's like they have been very, very good. I mean, making six of eight, uh, you know, conference mm -hmm. finals. That's very impressive. 
they haven't won one championship. So it, it's they haven't won a championship since 2008. So so it's it's as good as they've been, as consistent of a great of a regular season team. And they won those first two. They are so talented and they have set the bar so high that they have made a championship or bust because they, we know they have enough, right? They have the yep. best starting five. They defend. They score. They have an absolute stud in Jason Tatum. They have another absolute stud that can go and be a number one option. Most other places in Jalen Brown. They have the best guard defender in Drew Holiday. They have the best role player in Derek White. I think for them to actually win the championship and beat one of these teams in the Western Conference, they need Przingis. They need his shooting. They need his ability to stretch the floor and p- play that two-man game. But yeah, this team is so good and they've shown us how dominant they can be that just getting to the conference finals is enough. Getting to the NBA finals is enough. So when you have this talent, when you you set these expectations so high, you have to win it all this year. And if they don't listen, is it a failure? Yeah. Internally, you you are playing for a championship. Do they blow it up? Do they? No, I think they're going to keep this core together. Now, Missoula might be gone. Some other little pieces might be gone. But for the most part, they have their team for the next four to five, six years. They just need to get get that big championship. And once they win one, I wouldn't be surprised if they would. They're going to win another one. Like they they Whoa. are that good. They are that good. So and they're straight up cakewalk into the finals with the with the teams that they're playing here. Yeah, that part does help. Uh, funny you said it's not a failure if they don't win because Rajon Rondo says it is a failure if they don't win the championship this year. And again, it's tough because you got you got Denver possibly lurking over on the other side. Uh, it's always going to be somebody tough over there, Lou. You agree with Rajan, though? Failure if you don't win at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree because this is a sentiment that, that they've expressed. They feel like it'll be a failure without coming away with the title. You know, they, they, they lost to Denver a year ago, and they feel like they're a better team since then, and they feel like they're, they have enough to get over, that, get over that hump and get over that edge. And so Rajon Rondo is only echoing what – you know, internally what the Boston Celtics have said themselves. You know, this is championship or bust. We're tired of, like I said, we're tired of just being an Eastern Conference Finals winning basketball team. We got to get to the mountaintop. So this is a fair assessment. Shams, Kristaps Porzingis. He gets a nice little rest. He's had a nice little rest uh, already. Are we expecting to see him in the next series? It's still unclear. He is doing more on the court, which is good. He's moving around. He's shooting. He's he's doing some pick and roll stuff on the court. So he's starting to do more and more. But you have to be careful with that cast rain. He's about two and a half weeks in as of right now. He may need more time. I think the Celtics will see. Uh, they still have to wait for the for the finish of the other series to see who they face in the conference finals. But right now, the Celtics will be patient with Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, They need him for the finals. That's something that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll see who they play in the Eastern Conference Finals. But uh, if they are without him, I think the expectation still within Boston is that they need to get to the finals. They need to beat whoever's next with or without Porzingis. And then that's where the real championship or bus expectation starts come finals. That cakewalk situation is really coming in handy for his uh, his rest time. Well, well, well done.